Hi everyone, welcome to Port City Things, and in this video I'll be answering a question from the comments. The question is, which battery did I choose for my Elecro watch build? The short answer is, I haven't selected one yet, but I would go with a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery with a capacity of 250 milliamp hours. Now, coming to the long answer, I will be sharing a little bit of what I know, and I hope this will help you make your own selection in the future with your own projects. So the original question translates into a series of questions, and that would be what charging circuit is being used? What charging speed is being used? Can we configure the charging speed? Um, what charging speed should we aim for? And what depends on the charging speed? And how does the battery charge it determine if your battery is full? So this will give you a little bit uh, to think about and let's get started if you come here from my original post on my patreon where i've uploaded the stl files to print the case and the lid and also the original blender sources uh, you will find that i've also placed a link to where i found this display and if we scroll all the way to the bottom we will find the wiki page and there we will find details about the PCB. So we get the first idea what we will have to look for. This is where the battery socket is. So it's always a good idea to assume that the battery charger is close to that. So it might be either this circuit here or this one here closer to the USB. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we will find the schematic and PCB. So as we look at the schematics and zoom in, we find the battery charging circuit here in the left hand corner which is the tp4054 and then looking at the data sheet we will find the voltage is fixed at 4.2 volts which translates to a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery and we can see that it has this prog pin here which is defined with this formula here, which means we can calculate what the charging speed is depending on what resistor has been used here. So we have a two kilo ohm resistor here and the result would be 1000 divided by 2000 equals 0 0.5, which means 0 0.5 amps, which translates to 500 milliamps. So that answers the first three questions. The charging circuit is a TP4054, the charging speed is set to 500 milliamps and we can configure this charging speed by replacing this resistor here that's resistor r2 if we do a little bit of searching online we will find um, pages like battery university i'm taking here which says the advised advised charge rate of an energy cell is between 0 0.5 c and 1 c complete charge time is about two to three hours and if we jump into Stack exchange, we see mentions of 2C battery charging, uh, which would be fast charging. And it's always recommended to check the documentation of your battery, what it can actually do. But this is some uh, no name thing I found on AliExpress, which looks like this. Or if we take a closer look, like this, there is no documentation or mention what charging rate we can we can use. So what I would always recommend is to go with the 0.5 C charging rate. Now, before we can choose a battery, we need to think about this charging speed thing versus the battery. What does this mean? So if the charging in this example rate is set to 500 milliamps, and I would connect the tiny battery I selected, and the, the reason why I selected this is because it's the only one I have that fits, and that's usually the size for a wearable device, this size. This was, would result in a 2C charge rate, which means we're charging with twice the amps going in as the battery battery's capacity in milliamp hours is. What does that mean? So a charge rate of 2C would be considered as fast charging, and a battery of... Uh, and a charge current of 1C would be considered a uh, a normal charge rate. And then there's the recommendation recommendation of using a charge rate between 0.5C and 1C, 
and I think at zero point at zero point five C the, the total charge time would be two to three hours, which matches my experience as well. And um, this means the fa the faster you charge it, the less time you need to spend to wait for it to charge. If that is what you want, and you know from the specification of your battery. Uh, it can handle it, you can go for that. If you don't have a specification for a battery, because um, the one I chose is something cheap from AliExpress, um, I would recommend to go with a 0.5C charge rate to be on the safe side. That also has the benefit that um, any battery will last longer, the less stress you put the battery under. And if it's it's a wearable device, it will be... Um, discharge slowly as well so i think that makes sense but there's also another thing that depends on this charge rate so if we consider that the charge rate would remain at 500 milliamps as it's built into this battery if we go into the data sheet you will find something else um, and that would be charge termination so a lithium-ion battery is charged in two phases the constant current phase which would be the first fa the, the, the the phase where it the most energy goes into the battery and as we near completion of charging the battery it will switch into constant voltage charging mode and in that phase it will set the charge voltage to 4.2 volts and the amount of energy going in will be limited by the battery and then the battery monitor uh, the battery charger will monitor the the current going into the battery and as soon as it sees c divided by 10 it will stop charging. So if we take a small battery like this one and charge it with 500 milliamps, it would get most of the energy in a very short time and heat up. But the cutoff would be far sooner before the battery is full because the battery charger would cut off as soon as the battery would be taking 50 milliamps per second during constant voltage charging mode. So that means if I change our prog as specified in the data sheet to let's say 5000 kilo ohms, that would be 200 milliamps because 1000 divided by 5000 is a fifth. So a fifth of an amp is 200 milliamps. The battery would not stop charging at a constant voltage current resulting at 50 microamps, but it would keep charging until we reach the threshold of a tenth of 200 milliamps is 20 milliamps. So slower charging will also mean that you will have a, maybe a little bit of a longer runtime because the battery is charged fuller than at the fast rate mode. What does this mean in my case, um, where I want to make this work, where I have a small device with a tiny battery, but a charge current that is what I consider too big? It means we need to change the R-PROG resistor. So this is what the PCB looks like under the microscope. If we switch to the, the layout of the PCB, which is um, also provided by Elecro. We can see the charge controller is the component with the reference U2 here in the top right corner, which would be in the PCB corner here up here in the right where the USB port is. So let's align those views. And the resistor R2 that's being used to set the charge rate. You can see the 2K value also here is the tiny one here in the corner, which again under the microscope is this teeny tiny thing here. Interesting. Um, so in my designs, I always try to make sure that it's a 0603 resistor that's easier to replace, but I think I can replace this with a 0402 resistor and by scratching the PCB a little bit. Let's see if that works. So I've just peeled the PCB out of the case. So we have more room to access this. And you can see 
if I were to heat up the iron, we, we could remove it. Let's remove it and see what happens. The easiest way of desoldering a tiny component like that is what I do is I drown it in solder until it disappears in this tiny blob and I can peel it off the PCB. Let's get a better angle. And it's gone. Hidden somewhere in this blob here. So I found 5.1K0402 resistors, which is close enough to 200 milliamps charging. So we'll get that out. And let's see how we can get that in place. So if we look at the, the drawings, this pin here, the top one, pin two is the ground pin. So we'll start by soldering to pin one. And since 0402 is bigger than what's placed, placed on here, I will try to scratch the PCB behind it, depending on how big it is, and then solder pin two back to ground again. Let's clean the pads a little bit. Especially the ground pad needs to be flat in this case, so we can put it on top. And then I will add a blob of solder onto pin one. Whoops, let's move it into the middle so we can see something. Just the light helps to just help also helps. I think I have to clean the tip first before I can get that to work. That's step one. And then get some flux in there. which is a shit ton, but more is more when you're working with flux. And as soon as I'm working with flux, I need to... Oh, I should have turned that on earlier. The desoldering, no, no, the solder film extractor. I hope it can still record my voice through all this noise. This is tricky to be honest. Actually, that's not a dumb idea what's happening. Let me check which is the pin. So, if I solder it directly to this pin, I can skip this tiny pad here and then go to either this. One. Yeah, that makes more sense. So, I don't need to use the original footprint. I can just solder it onto the pad directly as it was already pulled into that. So this is the prog pin here. So on the screen, it's pin five close to R2. And on this PCB, it's rotated. It's on this side. So it's already soldered onto there, which makes it a lot easier. So it can just go diagonally into, into this pin. And um, if I just pick up the resistor, I can test if it's soldered because it's stuck here and I can turn it and if we zoom in a bit more on oh, zoom in but just get yeah we can see it's not touching or shorting itself on this pad here and if I add a blob of solder onto the last pad I don't even need to scratch the PCB Just let a little bit of solder flow in between here. Yeah, we can see it's flowing underneath it. And it should have a connection. We can test it with a multimeter in a bit. That should actually work. Turn off the noise that keeps the fumes out of my face. And let's measure what's happening between pin five and ground. I mean, in theory, we would have measured that first, so we have something to compare. So this measures nothing because I'm in the wrong mode. So where's ground minus is here and this pin is 
our programming pin. And we're getting 5.3 kilo ohms. That's great. That's what I wanted to see. And I assume that would work. So switching back to this thing, we see that 1000 divided by 5300 ohms gives us 188 milliamp hours. So we're even below 0.5 C, which is fine for me. It will take a long time to charge, but it will complete it nonetheless. Now, the next step would be to attach the connector to the battery and test it. And we're back. I found a battery that has the right connector and the size that I had been talking about. 250 milliamps. By the way, if you see these markings here, see how I'm using a blunt object to point at the battery, um, is 50, 20, 30, which means this battery has a size of five millimeters thickness, which is the 50, and a length of 30 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So if you're looking for a battery that fits a certain size, you can try making up these numbers, or you can read from these numbers how big the battery is. So the desk, you can see this is just about 30 millimeters. It's always a bit more, and this is 20 by really careful here not to poke it because I don't want to yeah that is that and let's see if the connector has the right polarity so that should work so if I insert this in here let's hope I'm recording good we should get something Maybe it's a wonky connection no now it's in you can see it lights up, it works using this tiny battery. So this has been running for a couple of minutes because it took me ages to find this thing, which is a tiny monitor you can plug into your USB and we can see what current is going to it. Not sure if this is visible, but we are drawing 300 milliamps in total which makes sense. I would guess the low or medium brightness plus the ESP to draw something around 80 or 100 milliamps. Or I could make up any number that fits, but um, that that's a good power draw that we're seeing here, which is a lot less than what I would expect it to be seeing, which would be half an amp, which is, it is not. So that works. I hope you don't have any more questions, to be honest. But if you still want to leave a comment, I'm not going to stop you. So all that remains to be said is take care and see you next time. Just as I stopped the recording, I had an idea to verify it. So while it's charging and it's on, it's drawing 300 milliamps. So if I disconnect the battery and then still plug it in again, we can see what the difference is. So let's unplug it. Remove the battery, plug it back in. And that's 100 milliamps. So we're off, just, yeah, that's 199 point something. That's 100 milliamps and the difference is 200 milliamps. So I calculated with 5.3 kilo ohms, we should end up at 188. So it's closer to 200 milliamps than 188. And that's good, good enough for me. All right, cheers, bye.